with that being said, uh, I, I really want y'all to, to pay serious attention to what's going on. If your professors knew how to make some money, they wouldn't be teaching the class. Let's get to it. So, some of what you're being taught is extremely wrong. I mentioned that in the beginning of my talk. Um, let me show you why. This right here, everybody know what this is? This is the US debt clock. A student, I believe this was a Georgia Tech student from what I'm told, created a, a program. And this program runs 24-7, seven, seven days a week. It don't stop. And it has our US national debt at $20 trillion. That's trillion, right? 20 trillion. When Obama got into office in 2009, we were at the White House, the debt was like nine trillion. So under the Obama administration, this has nothing to do with Trump or Trumponomics, under the Obama administration, the country's US debt is now at $20 trillion. What does that mean? There's 320 million Americans in America. When you divide that number by 20 trillion, that means everybody in America. We're not talking about black folks. Everybody in America owes 62,000 to the Fed. Three, one third of the United States 320 million actually pay taxes. Everybody don't pay taxes. Only a third of the United States population pay taxes. What does that mean? That means that that tax paying group owes 169,005 to the Fed. This is no student loans. This is no mortgages. This is no car notes. This is just you being born and your social security number being used as a way to loan money against you as an individual and that debt being offset or being used by the government and offset by you. That's what this represents. That's a major piece of information as it results to students. That's a major piece of information because whether you decide to take out student loans to pay for your education, you already behind the eight ball 169.5. Ain't nobody telling you that. Part two. Your current student loan debt in the United States. That's a lot of zeros, man. I don't even know, what is that, 1.5 trillion? This is the current debt load that students have right now. That's 1.5 trillion, yo. Look at this. Credit cards is out saying, auto loans is insane. Like, what you're being told when you come on campus and Discover comes on Fair Street and they're giving you credit cards, Right? They're not sitting down and they're not telling you, yo, this is the situation right now with America. We're not talking about black America. We're talking about America. White folks got these problems as well. And there's no solution pending or being taught in any institution that's rectifying this right here. There's no student, there's no school. There's the B school at Harvard ain't even teaching this. There's no curriculum in place on a middle school level that teaches how to stop this. There's a machine that's set up that says, hey, you want to get an education, you want to become a doctor or a lawyer, check this out. We got a student loan program for you. It's called Direct Loans. And we want your parents to sign up for that. In fact, we want them to co-sign on that. That's nuts. Everything that y'all have been taught about how you finance in your education is wrong. And I'm not here up to, here to debate this. This is not up for discussion. This is not something that we want to, to, to pontificate ad nauseum. It's a problem. And I'm talking to y'all like I would talk to my son. I got a son at Middlebury College in Vermont. David Jr., he's on the internet. Y'all can Google him tonight on YouTube. David Jr.'s tuition is $75,000 a year. Harvard's is $69,500. My son's education is more at Middlebury than it is at Harvard. So in the Anderson house, I'm not doing student loans. I told him straight up to his face, hey, yo, homie, we ain't doing that in this house. And every parent that's in here that's signing up for student loans, you're putting your kid at a disadvantage. You're economically disadvantaging your child when you sign up for the Pell Loan. And the reason why I'm putting my finger on this is because this is critical information, man. And we have to show solutions on how to change this. Some of y'all might have signed up for a student loan. You need to know how serious this is. Because if you don't put situations in place to counter this measure, you're going to be stuck. Let me show you why. STEM, we all hear about STEM, we hear about careers, we hear about reasons why you need to get a good education so you can get a good, good job, right? Get a good job, go to school, get, like that's gonna guarantee that you're gonna get a good job. Check this out. These are the occupations 
that pay the most, right? You guys are here on a Saturday morning on a college campus. This is the last, Custard's last stand for black education in America, the AUC. Morris Brown, Morehouse, Stumman, Clark, the whole nine yards. This is it. And these are the jobs that they're saying pay the most. Listen to this class. Software developers, average salary, $65,000. Engineer, average annual salary, $63,000. Scientist, researcher, which I don't want to knock, because we need, we need some black scientists. The man's creating Ebola in Africa, and somehow it's just affecting black people. Where the black scientists at? How come somebody ain't solved the AIDS crisis yet, and Margaret S. Anselman uh, put a patent for the AIDS virus, uh, patent number 5676977, was patented in 1996, and ain't nobody back that and put that out on the market? Come on, man, where the black engineers at? This is, this is it. Where y'all at? Y'all know where the, uh, the Jordans is at. Y'all know where the Red Bottoms is at. We know Jay-Z and Beyonce coming on Tuesday <laughs> at the Phillips Arena. Ain't nobody trying to figure out these challenges? Come on, man. Environmental professionalism, 56,000. Now, this is the creme de la creme when y'all get out of school. This is what the teacher is telling y'all to do. I'm not saying don't do this. I'm just telling you what's going on right now. This is per the Huffington Post. Now, lowest pain. Now, you got to understand the language. It's very hard for, for black men and women to get to come out of school and get the highest paying jobs that there are. All right? So we want to look at both sides of the fence. We want to look at the lowest paying jobs, lowest paying occupations. Call center specialists, right? My freshman year, they had us at the King and Queen Tower doing the answering the phone, doing the, uh, the debt collection. And they said, oh, you can make a great career here, $44,000 annually. Claims examiner, $41,000 annually. Customer service representative, $37,000 annually. Uh, category assistant retail, $35,000. Come on, man. Ain't nobody living off of that. You can't support the debt class, is what I'm saying. You're not going to be able to support, whether you're in the lowest bracket or the highest bracket, you won't be able to support the interest payment on the loans that you're taking out to get your education. This is the deal. And there ain't no plan for that. Ain't no, ain't no class to, to, to acknowledge how to counter that. Ain't no solution for that. That's not a course curriculum in school on how to set yourself up to actually win financially in America. That's not a curriculum. But you're taking our student loans to pay for this stuff. Did you know that actual curriculums take seven years to perfect? Did y'all know that class? Mm -hmm. If I wanted to send a curriculum to Random House, and I was like, yo, this is my curriculum. This teaches, actually teaches, bona fide proof, teaches students how to become millionaires. This is the curriculum I want to put in. They're going to tell me, yo, Dr. Anderson, that needs to be perfected in the market for seven years before we bring this into the institutions of higher learning. Seven years. What does that mean? That means that professors are teaching you dated information that's not being used in the marketplace currently. So you're taking out loans to learn dated information that can't be utilized in the marketplace when it comes to business. I'm not saying everything. I'm talking specific for business. It can't be used in the marketplace. It's inferior. It's obsolete. And there's no real plan in place to counter any of this. This is an abomination, yo. We talk about racism and white supremacy. Ain't nobody dealing with this issue. This is crazy. Let's talk about salaries regionally. San Francisco, this is from the Pew Research Library, all right? Pew is supposed to be the authority on these kind of measures and this type of research. In San Francisco, they're talking about 62.5 or 62.8. In New York, they're talking about $60,000. Yo, man, rent in downtown Brooklyn is the highest real estate market in the world right now. Rent in downtown Brooklyn is averaging or average somewhere between three dollars and $5,000 a month. Five Gs a month times 12 is 60000 the average income in New York right now, highest paid salary in New York right now, 60000 How are you living like this, man? Los Angeles, 55000 Chicago, 54000 Minneapolis, 53000 Dallas, 50000 And Atlanta, Georgia, $49,000. 
Atlanta, Georgia, the, the epicenter for black wealth in the world, home to civil rights, and your black behinds are going to institutions of higher learning using student loans, and your best shot if you make it and don't get pregnant or don't get shot in the back five times by law enforcement or don't die from some odd um, attack from white supremacists, you're going to do 49.5. That's your best bet according to the research. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. It ain't going down like that. Y'all gonna learn how to become landowners. Y'all gonna learn how to become business owners. Y'all gonna learn how to invest in bitcoins. Y'all gonna know what Ethereum is. Y'all gonna know what, um, what's the other coin that just came out? Ripple. Ripple, thank you. Y'all gonna know what all this stuff is. Because if you sign up and subscribe to the program that they got for you right now, you're gonna be stuck. Job stands for class just over broke. It's something that you don't want to stand up for. I'm not saying don't work a job. What I'm saying is don't seek to work a job that just gives you one stream of income. Nobody does that. In the book, they said Solomon has seven streams of income. Why is it in our institutions we're being taught to have one stream of income? And that's cool. We okay with that. We go going to sleep with that. Your parents is teaching you that. Something's wrong, class. Something is wrong. Let's talk about black economics. Because Pew Research, I don't believe that they interview enough black people to find out what our economic situations are. Jesus Christ the Master went on record. What was the situation? There was shekel coins that were being hyperinflated. The money changes were hyperinflating the value of a shekel coin. The Hebrew shekel coin at the time should have been about $5, right? right? Yeah. When the money changers got together because they knew that these black Jews, do your research, needed to pray to their black God to get into the temple of holies of holies, the money changes. Wall Street decided to hyperinflate the money. Yeah. And the account says that Christ acted outside of himself. They turned tables over. They bust people in the head. Jesus, he ain't supposed to do that. He got violent. He went ham. That's the account. It's the book. So my thing is, if Christ the master went ham over the issue, over the matter of black economics, what are we doing every Sunday? What are we doing in our schools? What are we doing in our households? Were we not taking that same anger and affecting some type of change on something that we can control, black folks? What's up with that? What's up with us? We, not, we, don't, we don't love the Lord enough to understand what he's telling us? To utilize the tools that he's given us to actually have an abundant life? Yo, man, we living on some foolishness right now. I'm going to just be straight up with y'all. Black folks are living on some foolishness right now. We ain't supposed to be living like this. Check to check, fist to cuffs, 15th to 31st. Who does that? There's no other race on the planet that lives the way that black people live. None. I just got back from, um, not just, but I, when I returned from, from, from Japan, the average Japanese person had on average 50 Gs and they say these 50 stats, yo. 50 rats. We got like negative $20 in our account. I'm not trying to get on a tangent, man, but I'm trying to impress upon you the importance of black economics. It's everything. Don't waste your time throwing your fist in the air talking about Black Lives Matter. Black Lives as an organization doesn't matter when George Soros puts $150 million behind the campaign. Come you on. don't have no strength in that. And some of y'all might not know who Soros is. You need to Google that. George Soros went on record breaking the Bank of London. The Queen of England broke her to her knees. She had the night in. But Negroes don't know this. We running around with our fists in the air talking about Black Lives Matter. You want to get all caught up in that, right? We don't have no dog in that race. $150 million? That's not representing our interests. Black Lives Matter is not representing our interests. So y'all got to do some research. Let's get into where we are as it relates to black America. Check this out. White net worth. Y'all want to talk about what the real issue is. Social political issues. Right? Getting shot in the back five times. This is what it is. White net worth is 13 times. 13 times greater than ours. 13 times. 13. 13. Yo, that means that the gentrification issue is in gentry, gentrify in the Latin means to move. 
So gentrification is actually the moving or displacement of black folks. That's the word. That means that white folks can afford to live in our own neighborhoods. Economically, when they have 13 times more resources than we do. What does that mean, class? That means that we gotta get about the business of figuring out how we can get 100 times more the resources that we currently have. Period. That should be your only lesson in school right now. Some of y'all wanna be doctors, y'all wanna be lawyers, y'all wanna be all this crazy stuff that your parents told you to go do. I honor that, yo. Your parents want you to be more successful than they were. But the bottom line is right now, black folks, if y'all don't become business owners, if y'all don't become investors in the market of cryptocurrency, if y'all don't become the owners and purveyors of natural resources, you're done. You ain't even gonna be able to work nowhere to be no doctor. You ain't even gonna be able to practice nobody's law. You can't work in nobody's law firm because there's gonna be no job pool that's gonna hire your black behind. You gotta create jobs. That's what college is about. Learning how to solve problems so that you can go create the jobs to fill the needs in the community. That should be a class. It should be a course curriculum. We're sounding the alarm on where we are at Black America and ain't nobody doing nothing about it. Now, let me not say nobody. Clark obviously has me here right now for a reason, so I'm very appreciative of that. But all the schools <laughs> need to be doing this right now. All of them. Doesn't just need to be one, one day out of the year. This needs to be going on every day of the week. Church is open on Sunday. What about all the six other days? I know you got Bible study on Wednesday, church. But what about Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, Thursday night, Friday? What's up with that? Y'all don't got no credit seminars going on? Ain't nobody teaching nobody how to invest in tax and certificates for real estate in the church? That's crazy, but we're supposed to live the abundant life. Let's focus on this, y'all. White net worth is 10 times greater as it relates, 141,000. Negroes, where do we fall on this line? 11,900. $11,900, yo, this is nuts. Our brown brothers and sisters, the Latino community, they up $2,500 over us, 13.7, and technically, they just got here. There's 42 million black folks in the United States. There's 53 million brown and Latino brothers and sisters in the US. Our numbers have not increased since 1984. That's a whole nother lecture as it relates to Anne Rand, Planned Parenthood, and eugenics and all this other stuff that I don't have time to get into right now. So we have to be productive in so many other ways. And I mean that literally. Let's deal with household incomes. Black versus white. I'm not trying to get racial on you. This is economics, purely economics. Why do white folks get to do different things? Why do they have boats at Lake Lanier? And I'm gonna tell you my boat story before I get out of here. Why do white folks have more fun? It ain't because of racism and white supremacy. White people have more access to disposable income than your black behind us. Who owns their homes? Let's talk about this, because this is what this is about, ownership. 72% of white folks own their homes. Man, come on. Think about this. My mama rented a 850 square foot box in the Bronx, New York, and she still rents today. Do the math on that, it's a million dollars, man, that she gave to people that don't look like us. Renting, the Bible says to uh, possess the land, that's a mandate. My mama rented for 45 years ago. That's crazy. That type of thinking has to be addressed, we have to change this. So let me get into this because my time is short. I want to talk about solutions and if I may, I need to take some time to talk about these solutions right quick because this is, a, this is the reason why we're here. I don't want to get political, but there's something to be said about this Donald Trump story. And let me get into why. Y'all might not know this, y'all might be too young to know this, but this is his father. His father is Fred Trump. And this is in the uh, late 70s, early 80s in New York City. His father was a carpenter, got some money from the government to build projects. Y'all know anything about the PJs? Actually, the project problem, um, not problem, the project project started here in Atlanta, right? Right down the street, 1973, mm -hmm. I think it was. All right? Um, and now they just built the King uh, swimming pool in that same area that the project started. In New York City, Fred Trump got some money from the government to build the projects. And this is 40 years ago, Donald J. Trump and his dad having a conversation on one of the buildings that they own. And I don't know what the conversation was, I wasn't there, but it was probably something like this. You know something, Donald? Owning land, you could be the president one day. Check this out. These are the plans that Fred Trump was going over with his son, Donald Trump, and 40 years later, look at the outcome, right? 
So I don't want to talk any more about Trump. I just want to show you what legacy does. What having a father that has some type of vision does. And I know there's like discrepancies with having dads in the home and all this other type of stuff, but Barack Obama didn't have no father in the home, man. So there's no excuse to chase black excellence. No excuse. It's not contingent upon your dad being in the home or not. What it's contingent upon is you aligning yourself with a vision that gets you to where you need to go and you invest in your money and you own some type of business because this is what these people do. Now let's get to the solutions. I might go over time on this, so I'm just putting this out, but this is very imperative. This is the reason why we're here right now. These are the solutions, because I don't want to sit here and paint this dismal picture. Ms. Landis called and said, hey, Dr. Anderson, we need to do this, blah, 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 go over the economic update. Yo, I appreciate the time for the economic update. We know our situation is all the way messed up. What do we do to fix it? Here we go. My, and this is my opinion, okay? But well, my opinion is to say no to student loans. They had a campaign back in the 80s. It was like, yo, say no to drugs. Say no to student loans. Can we do that? Oh, we can't do that now because we don't know how hard right, cool. So, Darius Quarles. Everybody need to write this down. That's why we're here. We came for the solutions. Y'all know this guy? Yeah. How many of y'all, by show of hands, know who this gentleman is? One person in the room. One. Check this out. Y'all know who Jay-Z is? Everybody show of hands. Everybody know who Jay-Z is? Come on, man. I know y'all going to the concert. I'm not going to the concert. We got We'll be on the floor. All right. We don't know who Darius Quarles is. This is a problem. Teachable moment. Darius Quarles, south side of Chicago, single parent home, didn't have no money, right? Mom couldn't afford to send him to Morehouse. He went to mom and was like, yo, mom, same conversations we've had, same conversation I had with my own mother, and she found it upward bound 24 years ago. Mama, I need some money to go to school. I ain't got it. Darius, instead of being mad, went and wrote a book based off of his experience raising a million dollars in scholarships. And he put it in a $15 book that's available on Amazon.com right now. It's called Million Dollar Scholar. Darius went to scholarship.com, he went to grantspace.org, he even went to the Foundation Center at 50 Hurt Plaza, right here in Atlanta, where there's over 150,000 funding sources, and he wrote a grant. Matter of fact, Captain Planet Foundation will give you $15,000 class for a 250-page essay. Ain't nobody in here writing essays? Y'all want to go to your parents and have them go on the hook for a pill on instead of writing an essay for 250 uh, words to get 15 racks. That's insane. This book has every possible way to raise the equity that you need to pay for your school. This should be a mandate in every freshman's course curriculum. What's up with that? This is Darius Quarles. This is not something that's far-fetched. This is inside of our own community. This dude went to Morehouse, raised a million dollars, Paid for all four years up front, right? Still have four hundred some thousand dollars left, left over and graduated. So these are things that we have to do. Y'all know D1? Yeah. Right? He came out with the song No Cardo. Let me show you what I mean about No Cardo. And this is very important. I know we're out of time, but this is critical. Because on the Daily Report, when you go to Daily Report online, if you need a car, you can click on abandoned auto. This is public knowledge. And when you click on abandoned auto and public auction comes up where you don't need a dealer license, these cars start at $100. Now, I have people that work for me, young people. I got a couple of them that run around the office 25 or so, and somebody's car got repoed. Instead of crying about it, I told them to get in the daily report and find a vehicle that they purchased for $200. Then, fix the car, put a battery in it, clean it up, and then put it on Uber. Lift inside car. So now this car generates $1,500 a week. And this individual can now get back and forth to work. Do you understand what I'm telling y'all? Yeah. I'm telling y'all how to solve some problems. Major life crises. In this legal newspaper, the Daily Report, you can go into the public notice section and type in judicial real property. Now this is million dollar strategies right now. And you get, oh my God, notice of judicial foreclosure. Y'all saw Black Friday. Y'all saw me jumping up and down, paying thirteen five for a house that's currently listed for six hundred thousand dollars. Who does that? How is that possible? Reading is fundamental because inside of the Daily Report it says right here, this is a live opportunity that the first Tuesday in December, December fifth, twenty seventeen, that for ten thousand dollars, ten thousand five hundred six dollars plus any attorney's fees, costs or interest. 
for 480 John Wesley dollars. That's down the daggone street. The tribute laws. Wow. That's right at the Freedom Parkway intersection in the middle of the highlands. That's like straight up the biggest zone for Atlanta in terms of real estate. It's hot as rocks. $10,000. Now, I know when we was on campus, Caps was getting refund checks that was somewhere in the neighborhood of five, six, seven, eight, maybe 10 G's. Y'all can't take your refund check and go to the courthouse and buy a property for 10 G's and sell it for three, four hundred? Hello? Hello? I'm just saying, man. So I'm about to close, but what I'm getting to, class, is that we need solutions right now. We don't we need no more people getting up on the stage, writing a book, doing no more films, or doing whatever we're doing that talks about the issues. We know what the issues are. Where are the problems that can be solved? Where are the problem solvers? That's how we fix this crisis. That's y'all. That's you guys. You guys are the future, or what we have left of the future, that can solve these insidious issues in our community. How do they get solved? They get solved two ways. Owning a profitable business. People tell you, you don't own a business, own a business. No, you don't just want to own a business. You want to own a profitable business. The reason why I'm able to stand up here right now, because when I get out of here, I got to go onto a plane and fly this jet up to Columbia, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and do the same thing later on this afternoon at 3 p.m. The reason why I'm able to do that is because we own a profitable real estate investment business. It's profitable. And I just showed you what we do. I just showed y'all the magic sauce. Just drop million dollar advice on y'all. And we manage a $10 million portfolio of real estate right here in the land. Just shows y'all how I did it. Learn to invest. Learn to invest. I'm gonna leave y'all on this. There was a monkey study that was done in 1971, all jokes aside, it's called the monkey study. And the monkeys, for 10 years, threw darts at the wall with a piece of paper, it wasn't a regular paper, it was a Wall Street Journal. These monkeys for 10 years threw darts at the wall. 10 years, they threw darts. And the scientists would write down what the dart fell on. And when it fell on something, they would invest in it, all right? They did this for 10 years, monkeys, chimpanzees. Now, on the other side of the coin, they had actual real investors from Goldman Sachs and Lehman Brothers that were going up against the monkeys. Do y'all know what happened in 10 years? Y'all know what happened? The monkeys had more money in their portfolio. The monkeys came up with like $550 million in 10 years from throwing darts at this piece of paper. Monkey study, yo, read this. Lehman Brothers, they took a wash, and the scientists said they took a wash because of what they call human error. Lehman super traders were making bets, they were making money, but they were taking um, losses because of speculation that was in the market and something that we can't compensate for, which is human emotion. Because human traders trade with emotion based off of speculation, right? The monkeys tore the frame out of super traders from Saxon and Lehman. That's nuts. Do you know what that tells us, class? That it don't matter what type of financial information or education you have. You just gotta get in the market. You gotta get in the market. Is anybody telling y'all what to get in the market and how to invest? That's a problem. We getting our hair and nails did, we get red bottoms, but we ain't in the market. We don't know what to invest in. That's a problem. So I came here to tell y'all, if y'all don't change <laughs> something about what y'all doing right now, y'all gonna be stuck. And I know y'all see a lot of older people, some of them y'all might run into every day, that's angry and they mad. They mad because they stuck. They always got attitudes. Why did, why Miss Mamie always got an attitude with me? Miss Mamie is mad at life because she's stuck working a job that she hates. Job stands for just over broke. And you can't change that. But what you can change is how you relate to money and how you relate to your own economics. Money is not a bad thing. It's not the root of all evil. Money is the resources that God sends you so you can solve problems, period. We've been trained, we've been taught an a inferior way on how to relate to having things and owning stuff. Y'all supposed to own stuff. We shooting a film right now in Africa. I'm financing um, a, a film that's being shot in tombs of Seti the First. We the first film company in the world to go into this tomb with the Egyptian government to get the footage that we got of Seti the First, one of the most noted African kings in the world. 
and all they talked about was wealth. Y'all need to know who y'all are. Y'all need to wake up and really see what's going on. So when we understand who we are, and we understand our goals and what our position is, then we can become the solution, which is becoming the problem solver. Clark, y'all have to become problem solvers. We just laid out our current situation in America. There is no educational institution that is implementing curriculum that's gonna solve these problems. Clark has a great program here for entrepreneurship, but y'all gotta dig deeper. When the school gives you this opportunity to talk to people that are actually making money, that are actually doing stuff, and that actually stop what they're doing to come here and talk to y'all, y'all that means y'all gotta go deeper. Y'all can't just have an annual symposium on what we're doing. Next year, this time, I need to see some millionaires, period. You can still go to class and make a million dollars. It's not that hard. <laughs> I made my first million in 2006. It was not hard. So your commitment on what y'all have to do has to be deeper. The same commitment that y'all got for hip hop, the same commitment that y'all got on social media, on your Facebook, on your Twitter, or on the Snapchat, and all this other nonsense, is the same commitment you need to have towards your economic problems. The same one. And if your parents in closing, if your parents didn't know, who cares? Who? Nobody has time to even Think about that. It's your job to get the information you need to be successful, and y'all got Google. Y'all got everything that y'all need. So I'm here. This is my direct email. This is my direct email. You have a question about anything that we discussed today. If you were paying attention, this is how you reach, reach me, because normally I hang out, I eat the chicken, take pictures and stuff like that, but we got a tight schedule and I gotta, I gotta catch a plane. And I, I'm just hang out for about 15 minutes or so, but um, if you're not able to get to me, this is my email, all right? Um, let me just tell you what I'm looking for. I'm looking to mold and teach individuals who are serious about real estate. That's what I'm looking for, all right? This individual would not need to be in class during the daytime, because during the daytime is when we throw down the, the real world of entrepreneurship. And I, and I, I don't want to have a conflict with y'all that are in school, you know, the underclassmen, y'all need to go to school during the daytime. But there might be some students here that have a little bit of autonomy over their schedule. And, and I'm looking to, um, to teach. I'm looking to teach at this stage of my career. Young people who are hungry. I ain't talking about interested. I'm talking about cats that's willing to like go the distance. You know what I'm saying? Like when we didn't have these boats and we wasn't hopping on planes and shooting movies and stuff, we were sleeping in the car, eating ramen noodles. And I'd go back to that in a heartbeat if I needed to because it's all about being hungry. I'm that hungry. I'm that lion on the Serengeti right now. I have an appetite for success. So if you got problems at home and your mama and your daddy and all that, don't bring that to the office. I really don't care. I'm looking for those individuals. I'm telling you right now, because y'all go home and say, oh, Dr. Anderson is very inspiring, all this, that, and the third, cool. You want to make some money because your parents don't know how to do it? I'm, I've written books on this, and i got something to give. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not trying to deal with foolishness. So before you shoot that email about what you heard and how inspiring this talk was, you need to do some introspective work to see if this is the coach that you want. I might not be the right coach for you. I might, I might be too rough for you, you might be too abrasive, you might not be able to handle it. I don't know if y'all seen Rocky with that little white dude, the little Jewish dude, Mickey. That's me, right? So I sent the job. Right? So I, got, I gave you my info, told you how you can contact me, um, and we're here, we're for real, all right? We bona fide black millionaires. If you ain't never seen one, you know what I'm saying? Bask in the excellence and the glory, right? Because this is you too, I am you. I'm not up here just putting out, I'm up here understanding that we need to replicate, we need to produce, right? Produce, and you don't have to have your own children in your line to produce. Information is for everybody. It's just who's ready to get it. I gotta go, guys, but I appreciate your time.